Welcome to the HTMI Culinary Channel. Today we're starting with some decoration pieces. There are several ways you can make decoration with food. You can use chocolate, you can marzipan, sugar, any kind. But today I would like to start with bread. There are bread show pieces you might have seen at some competitions or so. It's a very simple dough. It's just basically flour, water and salt. And we can make some really wonderful pieces with that. As mentioned, I'll uh, be using very few ingredients. It's mainly flour, salt and water. And uh, equal parts of flour and salt. Then we just add water to make a basic dough. Very simple and everybody has those ingredients at home. So we take our machine bowl. You can do by hand as well. But machine bowl is a little bit easier to work with flour and the salt in the bowl. Basically then we add it to our machine. Fix it in because it's going to be tight. And then these machines usually come in parts and we can use for this kind of dough either the bishop, we call it because it looks like a bishop's head, or the hook. In this case we use the bishop or the puddle. And then fix it in. And then we start our machine slowly and just add water to make a nice but still firm dough. The amount of water depends on you, it depends on the quality of the flour, but just enough to make a firm dough. Because this bread as such is not for eating as such, it is for decoration purposes because it does have a lot of salt. And as you can see, the dough is also not sticking to the machine bowl anymore. It becomes a nice, firm dough. And we'll just work that two to three minutes to make sure all the, the water is absorbed and the dough is nice and firm. There we go. So now we re can remove the dough. And there you have salt dough. You can give it kids to play with instead of the usual expensive play dough. It's a very cheap alternative. It's safe and you don't want to eat it because imagine it's 50% of here is salt. Now we have our basic dough. Very firm, pliable, still workable. Now we can also add food color to this dough, or in this case here I added some cocoa powder to give it a little bit different color at the end, because now we want to shape it and then we want to dry it. Shaping is very simple. First we want to use a container, for instance we want to make a basket, like a bread basket. So we use just a bowl, maybe this size, a smaller one. Anything basically which you can put in the oven for a few minutes because we want to not really bake it but more or less dry it and the dry heat will help us to prepare this quicker. So the dough we put to the side then we have our bowl. If you would put the dough directly on the bowl, on the bowl might be that the dough will stick to the bowl and then we have a challenge getting it off. So therefore we take a little bit of aluminium foil and cover our container. So now we have our container and that we cover with aluminium foil quite tight. So that will help us to remove the dough, the bread dough later after we dried it and sort of baked it a little bit. Also what I can do here is add a little bit oil, any vegetable oil will do to make sure that also the aluminium foil comes off our bread dough. Just a light coating will do. And that's that. So now our dough we want to roll out. So we take a piece, sufficient, then we roll it out to a sufficient size to cover our whole bowl. And at a certain thickness because you don't want to make it too thick 
and you don't want to make it too thin either. So a little bit flower dusting on your board or on your table will help also to prevent the dough sticking to our table. And then with even smooth movements we roll out our salt dough. And as you can see it's not sticking that much. Just a few Dusting of flour will help further to prevent any stickiness. That dough also keeps very well in its wet state and definitely after it's been dried it will keep for a month. So it's a nice thing to have as a showpiece for your restaurant, for your buffets, at home in the cupboard if you like. So that should be Almost enough. We'll check. See, can do. So we take that a little bit to the side and cover the piece of the dough. And now we're just making sure all the sides is nicely shaped and we don't have any folds. There you go, no air pockets inside. And then with a piece of plastic we call a scraper, or in German you call it a Schlesinger, you cut off the excess dough. Again, to give that a nice roundish shape of the bowl. And we don't throw that one because we still can make use of it for other things. And there you have the first step of our bread bowl. Now this, without anything, I would just put in the oven, keep it for a few days. The water will evaporate and will dry out. And we have the first stage of our bread, bread bowl. So now the bowl has been dried and you can lift it off and it comes off very nice and clean. Now this is... By itself looks quite nice, but we can do more with this piece. So what we'll do is we'll put it back, but we have the shape, it's nice. Now basically we want to give it a nice color, like a fresh baked bread. So we do take just some egg, whole egg, mix it up. As if you're making a scrambled egg or something. And then with a clean pastry brush fold all over. Okay, and with the pastry brush give it nice, it makes it very nice shiny and adds color to it while baking. Quite a few breads have egg wash or water glazing again to give that nice shine beautiful golden color because the egg will brown very nicely and make it really look beautiful. There you go. So now this again should be going back to the oven. To dry it, I forgot to mention earlier, you would need a temperature of 100, 120 degrees Celsius uh, just to dry it out. Now to brown it, we would go at a higher temperature maybe 170, 180 degrees. But then you need to watch it because once it starts browning, the egg starts browning, the color will turn brown, dark brown, and even black very fast. So that's, you have to watch that. So now while the actual basket is baking and browning, we still have excess dough. So now we want to start also make decoration pieces with that. And basically, the method here is very much the same as if you use marzipan or almond paste or uh, a chocolate paste. Basically, you take off small pieces and give it a bit of a pear shape or candle shape if you like. And then we have, in professional stores they have these. These are molds to shape leaves, to give that imprint and design of the leaf. leaf. So we take a little bit dough and basically press it by hand 
and off you go. We have beautiful leaves. And this also we want to dry, same we do with the basket. And to give a little bit 3D dimension, maybe we just don't dry it flat, but we lift it up a little bit and dry them in this way. So that's for instance the leaves. Now with the leaves go obviously go the flowers. So for the flowers, we take a small piece, roll it into a shape of a sausage. We was, because we want to cut the leaves into even shapes. Now the start of the flower is the same as the leaf. We make a small candle pair, a little bit pointy also. This will be the center bud of the leaf. And then again with our plastic cutter, we cut, for instance, to start off in three leaves. Leaves always have come in an uneven number. Basically you have three, five, seven leaves per, per round for the flower. And here also I use, like here I have covered this one in plastic to help it not uh, sticking on the metal. Here I also use just a piece of cling film, for instance. I spread out my three pieces of uh, salt dough, cover, and just press them down. Then the tips here of the pieces, maybe it's difficult to see. You just want to make very thin because this is the part of the leaf you really see. And you can remove the cover. And then we have basically three leaves. Now we bring them together. And again with a bit of egg or you can use water as well just to make it sticky, because that dough is not very sticky. You bring now the first leaf. Again, that's a bit liquid. Bring out the second leaf. And the third. And then you should have a full round of petal. And that's the first three leaves going around. Then you squish it a little bit together so that they will stick. There you go. Squish them again with together so that they hold. And there we have the first. And you can each petal, you can make it a shape a little bit to look really more like a natural rose, for instance, in this one here in full bloom. And this also we dry in the oven, first at low temperature, 100, 120 degrees, just to remove any moisture, any water from the dough, and that will then harden and stay solid. Then comes the second part, again, maybe with a smaller brush, we brush egg on it. Again, to give a nice shine, give a nice color to it. And then, after a few hours, maybe in the oven, or just leave it overnight, a few days out there, here in Switzerland, that the weather is kind of very nice and dry. It will just dry by itself, but obviously it will take longer time. As shown earlier, we can do the shape into a bowl shape, or if you're more adventurous and you have a little bit of money for an equipment, you can buy these. Uh, a few specialized pastry equipment shops, they carry these. It's basically a wooden board and these metal sticks and they can you can arrange them in two sizes a big or a small one with this equipment it looks a bit dangerous looks like spiky but you can do also baskets therefore what you need to do same dough as before you just roll it into long sausages just like that thickness not too thin because you need to have some strength in your dough, but they should be of equal thickness all over. So, could be a little bit thinner, but then basically what you want to do is you want to arrange your dough and alternate going back and forth in between. You see? Just like that all the way around 
and you do this maybe two, three times. Then with your next piece of rolled dough, you go the opposite way. See? So in this way, you build up to a basket. I would do this rows maybe three, four at a time, let it dry, and then build up the next three, four rows. Reason being is the dough, although it's firm to handle, it is still soft. And if you put too many rows on top of each other, the weight will press down and squash the below rows, and they will come out and it will not look as pretty. Me and the culinary students did earlier last week, we had a very important function in the school, so we did a few show pieces, and one of them sold dough bread. Right. As you can see, the basket here is from made with this mold. It's dried, then egg washed, and then put together. Also, the flowers, the roses, the leaves, uh, different kind of flowers. Each one hand shaped, dried, brushed with egg give it a little bit of color in a hotter oven, and then basically assemble. So on this, you can keep for weeks, if not months. In the buffet, it's very nice when you have a bread display uh, for the customers, you have a nice bread show pieces. As you can see, with some very few basic ingredients, flour, salt, water, maybe a little bit of cocoa powder, egg for egg wash, you can create something really beautiful. Bowls, Flowers put together, baskets, and again, it's a nice centerpiece for any buffet, for any showpiece. It lasts forever, and I think it's great. Recipe you will find on our website, HGMI Culinary uh, Center. And with that, I remain bada bing, bada boom, best wishes, and great dishes.